Next speaker is Jesse Bettencourt from Toronto, and he'll talk about self-tuning gradient estimators. Hi, yeah, so I'm Jesse, uh, and I'm going to be talking about implementing self-tuning gradient estimators um, with higher order gradients in Flux. And all this work is from the paper uh, Backpropagation Through the Void, Optimizing Control Variance for Black Box Gradient Estimation. Um, and that's by Will Grathwell et al. at U of T. Okay, so, oh no. Oh, a little too fast. Why estimate gradients? Uh, so there's a lot of objection, objective functions that are interesting to ML practitioners, um, which can't be backpropagated through easily. Um, and this is a problem because gradient-based optimization is like the main trick of machine learning. Uh, some examples of that are probabilistic models with discrete latent structure, um, some objective functions that are the, the result of a stochastic process that you can't differentiate through the stochasticity, um, reinforce, reinforcement learning algorithms, where the objective function is unknown to the agent, so it treats it as a black box, and, uh, or otherwise just processes that are not exposed to automatic differentiation, like maybe you have some graphics library that is giving you the output, and you can't backprop through that because it wasn't written in Julia. Okay. Oh. Uh, so the goal of this is to come up with some policy, uh, or rather come up with the parameters for a policy distribution, uh, which maximize the expected value of f. Um, and for example, in the example that we'll see in this problem is we're going to try to fit a policy distribution to another distribution, and the f that we'll be maximizing is the um, negative elbow between the the uh, unnormalized policy, or sorry, the unnormalized target distribution and the policy. Okay, and so just what that looks like is oh, can, the colors aren't coming out very very well, but essentially you have this like hairy looking unnormalized distribution and then our policy distribution is a nice tractable Gaussian and we're going to try to optimize the parameters of that Gaussian so that it looks like what you'd expect um, under the intractable distribution. Okay, and so one way to do that, uh, and this is the reparameterization trick, it is the thing that made variational autoencoders work. Um, it requires f to be continuous and differentiable so it doesn't solve a lot of the problems that we just talked about. Um, and the idea is that you, uh, <laughs> the idea is that you separate the intractable noise from the stochastic process into a noiseless parameter distribution, sorry, a parameterless noise distribution, and then some like tractable, uh, differentiable transformation. And then because f is differentiable, you can just pass this entire thing into your function and then take the gradients through, uh, with res like, through the function so right here, through the function, into your transformation, and then from your transformation to the uh, parameters of that transformation. And so this is low, low variance and an unbiased gradient estimator, but again, it has all of those restrictions. And so this is what that looks like implemented, oh no, it's a little small, but um, this is kind of what it looks like in Julia. Um, in particular, you can see that we just use the um, distributions package to solve these uh, like the likelihood under this, and you can just backprop through that. Okay. I'm gonna try increasing the font size a bit, but okay, yeah. Um, and so what this, actually training this would look like is you'd sample some random noise, you'd pass it through uh, the transformation, and then you'd take right here, this is the, the gradient with respect to just the function applied to this transformed noise. And then you get all these gradients and you backprop through. Okay. Right, so that was restricted because f needed to be differentiable. Uh, there's another gradient estimator called the score function estimator, uh, also known as reinforce, which does not require f to, be, um, f to be differentiable. And so you could just use f as a black box, and it's high variance because as you can see, the gradient with respect to your parameters only depends on your policy distribution, and then it's just multiplied by the value that it sees uh, when when pushed through the when pushed through the function, so this is high variance, and you can I kind of intuit why it's high variance because it doesn't actually know how the uh, the parameters depend on f. It only just sees it um, because it's evaluated there. And again, this is what it looks like. In particular, uh, it's a little hard to see, but I just strip away all of the tracking information before I pass it through f with this um, by putting flux dot data here. And so, like, essentially, there's no tracker information getting pushed through. So it's a black box. 
uh, and this is what optimizing that would look like. Um, you get the gradients with respect to uh, with respect to the the distribution, and so that corresponds to this term. And then here you just multiply it. Um, you multiply the, the gradients that you just got by the reinforce um, reinforce black box function. Okay. And so what we want is a low variance, unbiased gradient estimator um, that doesn't have all of these requirements on the differentiability of f. Uh, and this is where control variates enter. Uh, essentially, if I give you a gradient estimator, you can give me a control variate with a known mean, and then what I'll do is I'll subtract the control variate and then add back its mean. And so if the control variate are, if the control variate and the original gradient estimator are positively correlated, then what will happen is this subtraction here will Lower the, lower the variance of the, control vari or of the original gradient estimator and then add back its mean. Um, so it'll have the same expectation, uh, but will hopefully be lower variance. And so what this, uh, what this work do does in this paper is um, shows that you can learn a control variant with a neural network. Um, and then essentially what you do is use that high variance, um, high variance gradient estimator on the original function as the gradient estimator you're trying to reduce the high variance gradient estimator on the control variate, and then the known mean is just the low variance gradient estimator on the control variate, which is the reparameterization trick, which we know we can do because the control variate is a neural network and we can just back crop through that, um, right? So that's what this looks like here. Um, and optimizing that looks like this. And okay, so you sample, you sample some noise, run it through the transformation, you compute the gradients with respect to the, uh, to the Q distribution, the policy distribution, and that's this term right here. Uh, and that'll be used for both of the reparameter, or sorry, the reinforced gradient estimators. And then you compute the reparameterization gradient through the control variate neural network, and that's this term right here. And then so finally, your like, gradient estimates are just exactly this, f lax, like f of the, the function, minus the control variate, times that uh, reinforced gradient uh, term. Plus, back, plus, the re, or plus the reparameterization of the control variate. Okay, so and then that's how you get the gradients with respect to the parameters of your policy distribution. But how do you optimize your neural network? Well, what we want to do is optimize it to reduce the variance of the gradient estimates. And to do that, we need to reduce, uh, we need to know this gradient term and reduce its variance. And since our gradient estimator is unbiased, we can use this trick right here it's essentially just squaring the gradient estimator and then taking gradients with respect to that, uh, from of that with respect to the neural network parameters. But this is a higher order gradient. And, um, and so that can be done in flux right now. It's a little hairy. Um, but essentially we just take uh, the square of those previous gradient estimators, their mean, and then we take the gradient with respect to that. So this is this higher order gradient that we needed. Cool. Um, and so, I have done this. Um, wow, this is slow. Okay, um, and since it takes a long time to plot and stuff like this, I've already run this. And so essentially this is what, here. okay. And so this is where we start off. Um, this is the initial problem is this uh, policy distribution. It's actually three policy distributions that will all be optimized with the various gradient, various gradient estimators that we just saw. And then that's the target distribution. And then down here, what we see is this is the like, initial value of the control variate. And what, what you should see here is that um, essentially when we randomly initialize, it's telling the gradients to move in this direction, which we know is not true. And so hopefully it'll learn to tell the gradients to move in this direction so that the mean of this distribution goes that way. Right. And so I ran this for 20 epochs, um, or 20 iterations rather, um, for both the reparameterization uh, reinforce, and then also the lax gradient estimation. And there's kind of just a slight trick of the hat, which is that I'm, there's also the in, an inner loop that is doing 10 iterations to just optimize the control variant uh, a little faster. Right. And so what that looks like after, after 20 iterations, um, you can see the lax distribution is like spreading out its variance. Um, the reparameterization and reinforce are going in the correct direction uh, towards optimizing. In particular, the control variant has now learned that, okay, what we actually want is to move, move the means this way. All right. So 20 more iterations. 
um, LAX has learned to spread out its, uh, its mass a lot. The reinforced distribution um, has actually just exploded. Uh, it has a very hard time knowing which, how, to, how to manage its gradients. Um, and that kind of makes sense because it doesn't actually take the derivative through the function. And so every time it sees one of these massive spikes, it just multiplies its gradients like, by a lot. And it's, it's doing nothing sensible. And so this is why you needed the reparameterization trick to train VAEs. The reinforced gradient estimator wouldn't have cut it. Um, okay. And so what you can also see here is that now that the, uh, <coughs> now that the lax distribution has started to explore, like some of these samples are now coming from the other side of the target. Uh, it, the control variate is learning to sort of like correct and bring it back. Um, okay. And just, just to finish. Um, okay. So this is a, a, few, a few epochs later. Um, right. Okay, so if you, you, eventually this will converge so that the lax distribution will land on the target distribution. Um, but the thing that's disappointing is that the reparameterization distribution still hasn't. And the reason that is is that even though it has full access and can see the gradients through the function, this is kind of a pathological problem for that. Uh, the function has all these local gradient information that is, yeah, it's pathological. So it might see the function on this side and think it has to move away, and then uh, another close, sample would move it back in the other direction. So that's what these spikes are doing. Right. Okay, thanks. Thank you. So I have one quick, time for one quick question while the next speaker sets up. So you could make an animation of this. Oh, yeah, nice. yeah. It happens a little too fast Just, for that. Was there you, any questions? Yeah, kind of, yeah. 